Well folks, it's time to talk about the Salika. The ST205 shape within Gran Turismo 7's December patch, of course the GT4 rally car as it's more commonly known. Pretty iconic rally car in Gran Turismo's history, last seen of course in GT6. Already in premium form back then, which if I recall correctly is one of the reasons why even prior to the leaked car list I featured it in my predictions list. I think of vehicles that I thought could come back because as a general rule most vehicles that were premiums back then at the very least have a better chance than vehicles which weren't. You occasionally see some get upgraded but the premiums I think it clearly shows Polyphony's intent to already make them look better. Now this car is a very interesting one when it comes to tuning within the game and when it comes to its class because of course this vehicle fits in group B which doesn't make a huge amount of sense in real life, but in the game, you know, rally is a mess <laughs> in Gran Turismo 7 and in GT Sport as well. Being in this category, it literally is just a dumping ground. It's kind of like a slightly better version of Group X in Gran Turismo Sport, although the vehicles are more useful, thankfully, than that one because the wild disparity of vehicles within this category is insane. However, you can actually make up for this car's initial lack of power, because for those who haven't bought it yet, it only has 298 horses, according to the in-game specs, that is, not real life when it was actually racing, but with just one turbo upgrade, this thing jumps up to like 800 horsepower. It's bonkers the kind of difference that it makes. Now I will say, because it is much like the Evo that I owned for a couple of months, a very small engine with a very big turbo, it has some pretty chronic lag. Now you can turn up the anti-lag feature on the car to make that a bit better, but at least in my experience it still has quite a bit. Like top end it's still pretty good, but again to get that kind of power out of it, unless you sacrifice the high-end turbo, well by definition it's high-end, so it still doesn't really help that low-end sluggishness. So it's definitely a flawed car when it comes to actually using it for rallying in terms of super super low speed technical corners like hairpins, but at the same time it's not that expensive. It's 250,000 credits, which I actually would have expected it to be a little bit more, maybe 300,000 minimum, and it's of course in the legendary dealership, and doubtless eventually it will begin its natural rotation in and out of that dealership as all of the others do. Now with this in mind, is the Celica worth buying? I would actually say no. <laughs> Funnily enough, it's actually not a requirement. Is it worth buying is such a broad question that of course different people will have a different answer, but what I mean by is it worth buying is really, is this an essential purchase? It's simply not. Even if you see the footage of when I raced it completely stock against the Toyota 86 Group B car, you could see how much of a, a hard time it was having from that much more powerful machine, but even the tuned one that I drive as well here, up against some competition which I selected from my personal garage, including the Special Projects 911 rally car that I built last week, so check that one out if you haven't already. It does well enough, you know, I caught up to the lead car, which was also my Escudo, so, you know, that's not bad at all. But it's not really a car that I feel is an essential purchase. It's the kind of car to buy more so for the nostalgia than anything else. It's kind of like, and it's a little bit more useful than this, but it's kind of like the Renault 5 rally car. I recall saying in Gran Turismo 6 that that was one of those cars that it's great for, you know, the collector's appeal, the historic value, but the fact that it's rear-wheel drive just makes it so stunted. And even though at the time it was great, much like the rear-wheel drive Stratos was as well in its time, against a modern car they just don't really cut it anymore. When you cannot put that kind of power down, well, tuning it even higher is going to be an issue. In the case of this one, it's not the all-wheel drive problem or the four-wheel drive problem, because it doesn't have that issue. It's the lag problem. It's just not as sharp as a modern car. These newer machines, most of them fictional in the case of GT7, they're just so much quicker. They actually feel, to be honest, more like what would have been a Group S rally car rather than Group B. It was cars that really went above and beyond even that level. So, is it essential? I would not say so, and I think some people will probably disagree with that, but if you really step back for a second and put aside the nostalgia, and put aside maybe just liking the car, I think if most of us are honest we can kind of say, well yeah, you know, it's famous, it's well known, it's well respected, it's loved by many, many people, 
But in the game, you honestly don't get anything from this car that any of the immediately purchasable from the main dealer rally cars can do anyway. And if you do want to buy something historic, as completely cliched and utterly over the top as it is within Gran Turismo, well, honestly, just buy the Escudo, <laughs> because if you're looking for sheer rally ability, especially in an overpowered sense, well, of course, that's the clear choice. So ultimately, it's not really a complicated review for me, but maybe one which some people might be disappointed by, because it's not a bad car. In fact, in most ways, I'd say it's pretty good. The handling is good, it looks nice, it's a nice livery base to work with, the power is very impressive in terms of being responsive to tuning, but there are a couple of things wherein it shows its age, and not necessarily in, in a charming way. You know, it's not old enough to really be charming, it's more just about old enough to not cut it anymore, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So that's it overall for my thoughts. I would love to hear, though, if any of you have found it to be maybe a weapon. Maybe I've just overlooked something, perhaps, about a certain track or a certain scenario where this is a really good car. Absolutely drop that down below or your thoughts either way on whether you like it or not. And of course, for those who haven't entered yet and are interested, five days are remaining for my PS5 competition. It's two pounds to enter, free international shipping, and or I might just fly to you and bring it to you, <laughs> depending on how much it costs in comparison. But as I said, that ends in five days on Christmas Eve, and the link to that is down in the description. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.